Hi everyone. Um, I don't know what the sound's going to be like. It's a little bit windy today. Um, I've suddenly decided I um, usually get a bit miserable just after Christmas, but today I feel quite motivated to clean my greenhouse out. So I'm going to pull everything out, um, clean all my seed trays and my pots, which really I should have cleaned when I finished using them, but I always put them away dirty and clean them now uh, and give all the glass a clean. Um, not the most exciting video, but that's what we're going to do today. It's, this is where it's really messy. So let's start pulling all this out. Okay, so I've pulled everything out on the floor. Um, unfortunately, the wooden base I've got this on is pretty wet. Um, and I, there were even a load of wood lice, so I need to make sure I give that a good wash off so it doesn't rot. Because um, obviously if that rots, there's nothing holding the greenhouse down. than I thought it was going to be and I haven't finished cleaning all the pots um, but I'm losing light now so I need to go feed the animals. I'll show you where I got to today and then tomorrow we'll come back because we're going to um, plant some ranunculus in some grow bags I've got in the greenhouse. So I'll swing you around, show you how much I got cleaned today and then tomorrow we'll come back and finish where we got to. Okay so I hope you can see the glass is a lot cleaner got rid of all that green. It, actually, do you know what, even though it's got darker now, cleaning the glass has made it much lighter in here. So these are the two grow bags I've got at the bottom where I'm going to put some ranunculus in. Um, and then I've just started cleaning all my seed trays and things. I won't start sowing seeds in here for a little while yet, but it just means I'm sort of a bit more prepared cleaned all my watering trays, just moved some of the seedlings and little baby plants around a little bit. Um, but the glass, take a look at that glass. Chris, look, you can even see the reflection of things in it. Um, and try, I tried to get in all the gaps along here as much as I could. So it's not perfect, but it's a lot better than it is. And I really hope it will mean the environment in here is going to be a lot better for growing. Um, okay, I'm going to clock off for today and we'll come back and carry on with the whole wheelbarrow for the pots that need cleaning tomorrow. Good morning everyone. It's the next day now after I've been cleaning the greenhouse. Um, it's not a very nice day. Sorry, I have to complain about that. You can probably hear it's raining. Um, so what I've done this morning is I've set up the um, heated propagators and the grow light that I have in my kitchen. So I'm just going to um, sow some seeds now which then will go into the heated propagators under the grow lights. Um, and they'll stay on the heat until they germinate, then I'll turn the heat off 
and then I'll take off the humidity domes um, but leave the grow lights on so that um, the seedlings will have that light. If I don't do that they will tend to get a little bit leggy and grow towards the window so I have the lights even over the window there I still have the lights there. Um, the main thing we're going to sow today um, is snapdragons. I usually sow my snapdragons antirrhinum in the autumn and then some again in the spring. The ones I sowed in the autumn just haven't done very well and I have to be honest since I moved over to peat free last year I am still struggling with getting my seeds going. I've never had any problems before. Um, so this is a journey that I'm on at the moment to try and get the right seed mix, the right level of fertilising. Um, so it's, it's a bit early really, but I'm hoping by giving them a bit of a head start they'll be okay. And we've got various varieties, how to run them. I'll put the pictures up on the screen, let's have a look at what we've got. Um, we've got one called Costa Apricot, that's one I haven't grown before. Um, I don't think I've got very many because I think I tried to sow a lot of these in the autumn and a lot of them dampened off. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've probably got about nine of those, ten if I'm lucky. So, we really need these to germinate. And then I've got one that I did grow last year, which was very nice, um, which is um, got a picture on the packet that's um, Brighton Rock. I like that one, so that one was quite successful. Uh, this one was good as well last year, I'm not sure how many I've got left of those, um, but that's the Apple Blossom. Um, I'm not sure if I'll pronounce this right, Potomac Lavender, again I think I tried to sew those, so if I'm lucky, I might have about 10 of those as well. And, and as you probably know, um, Snapdragon and Tyrannum seed is so small, so I'm going to use tweezers. I think the first year I did it, oh, back in 2018, I had the pelleted um, seed, which obviously is much easier to handle and see. Um, oh, and more. Then I've just got the Monarch mixed, so I'll put a picture of that up on the screen for you. And I think I've still got, this is really old, old seed, yeah, <laughs> this is a really old one which is the rust resistant variety. Last year was the first year that I experienced rust because as a lot of you know it was really really dry um, and I was really pleased to have the rust resistant. They're not like my favourite but I was just pleased to have them when all the others got rust. Um, and one more, I've gone for the first time this year, I've gone for a yellow, I've gone for canary bird, um, so I'll put a picture of that one up on the screen. So that's what we're mainly going to sow today. So for most of my seed sowing, I use these reusable flats, they're really really sturdy plastics so that I can use them year after year after year. I'm not going to use these for my anti rhinum because the seed is so small. I'm actually going to use cell trays, um, so I've got uh, 24 cell trays, they're quite small so I can fit two of these trays into each of my heated propagators and I've got two heated so I'm going to do basically I'm do four trays of 24. Um, so I'm going to fill them up with, as I've not been getting all my peat free compost, I've got two different types of peat free compost in here, um, I'll put it up on screen because I have still got the empty bags in the workshop so I'll tell you what they are and I've also put some horticultural grit in there um, I just keep experimenting with lots of different ones my homemade compost is great for mulching but because I compost cold with vermiculture seed sowing is not great in it because I would just have so many weed seeds coming up uh, that then they end up out competing and sometimes you get excited because you think what you planted is growing and then it turns out that it's, it's weeds. Um, so I do buy the peat free. If anyone has had really good experiences with a peat free compost for seed sowing in particular, pop it in the comments below. I'd, I'd love to hear how you're getting on with it. Um, I'm hoping that this is just a learning curve for me and 
eventually I'll get it just right and um, my autumn sowing things will be as they used to be which was you know I'd sow them in the autumn they grow really quickly then I'd overwinter them plant them out in the spring and I'd be well away um, last year that just didn't really happen so I'm and it hasn't happened this year so I've really got a hope that these spring sowings are going to do well for me okay so I'm going to fill the four 24 cell trays um, and then we'll pop our antivirum seeds in those oh and we need some labels just had an unfortunate accident and I now stink of white spirit <laughs> basically I reuse um, plastic labels and I clean off the what was written on there in previous sewings with white spirit but unfortunately I just um, dropped the jar and um, yeah absolutely covered my nice clean greenhouse in white spirit and that's actually probably too big for 24 cell trays so I want to find some of the smaller ones eventually um, as with all plastics these do I find snap when I'm cleaning them because they just perish but I use them for as many times as I can with recycling and the environment. I mean, I've also cut up uh, milk bottles and things like that um, and written on those. I find with those, um, I can't write on them in pencil. I have to use pen and I, I quite like using pencil. I don't know why, it's just a preference. Um, but I never have enough of these labels. You always think you do. I've cut up, I'll tell you what's good, butter tubs, they're quite good. Right, I think that's probably just about be enough tags. I just ordered uh, my last packets of seed yesterday and I was very reserved. I was only supposed to order five packets, but I ordered six, so that's not bad really. Right, okay, so let's get our cell trays and pop some compost in those. Okay, I've just gone and got my sieve because I realised that these uh, multi-purpose compost that I put in are a bit lumpy. I really don't know why I don't wear gloves. I've got a whole container of gloves down there um, <laughs> because you can't do anything when you've got hands like this. Okay, we can now begin. Um, so I've just pinched um, some tweezers out of the bathroom because I just find getting individual seeds into each of the cells, well, I find it very difficult so I'm going to use tweezers and we'll just start with the one that's on top which is the canary bird and we'll write our label as I said I use pencil and because these are all going to be anti-rhinums I'm not going to write that they're anti-rhinums I'm just going to put the variety that they are okay so canary bird Right, okay, let's see how many of these we've got then. Oh, okay, so this one I've got loads of, so that's really good. Um, so I'm not going to start with that one because I'll start with some of the ones I haven't got very many of first. So let's start, oh yeah, with the Potomac, Potomac forgive me for pronunciation, um, the lavender. And this one was quite important because I'd wanted this for a wedding that I was doing in July, but that's not going to happen because I really needed the autumn sown ones to have germinated for that. Okay, what I'm going to do, because the seeds are so small, can you just see in the packet there? What I could do with is a really clean surface to just tip them out on. And I wonder if this old 2022 diary might be any good. 
Yeah, I think that'll work. <clears throat> right, so let's tip these seeds onto this diary. Um, and we'll see how many we've got. Oh yeah. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, so we'll do we'll do it as if it's twelve, and we'll see if because otherwise I'm not going to understand the rows if that makes sense. So let's just write a label for those. So that's the Potomac lavender. Okay. And what I'll do actually, which will work quite well, is I won't put one in the um, cell where the label is. Oh, but I'll put one in each of these. So, three, six, nine, yeah, so half a tray basically. Right, tweezers. <laughs> they seem like a good idea, but now they're right in the um, groove of the book can't quite get them out. Oh, we've got one, okay. It's so easy to waste these seeds. I mean, I think that went on there, but you can't see it because the same colour as the compost, which is another reason why the pelleted ones are quite good, because they're usually a really bright green or bright yellow or something. Again, I think that went in, but I wouldn't bet money on it. Okay, it's three down. Oh, you see now that one's just got caught in my nail. Oh, there we are, one. Right, two more of that one. Oh, still stuck to the tweezers. Last one. Okay, so it's 11 of those. Right, <clears throat> who next? Oh yeah, this one, Costa Apricot. This is one that I think I only had about 11 of. We'll tip them out and we'll give them a count. Oh gosh, I did a really bad job of opening this packet when I opened it last time. I need to be more careful with these precious little things. See, I can't even tell if that's a bit of dirt or a seed there. We'll plant it. Even if it's a bit of dirt, we'll plant it. Right. So, of the Costa Apricot, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we've only got nine. Right, tweezers. I'm just making little sort of finger imprints just for the seed to sort of rest in. If anyone's grown, this variety or the lavender I'd love to see some pictures of it in a bouquet maybe sometimes when you look at pictures online it depends on the light and the you know the photographer if any filters have been used sometimes it's really hard to get a really true representation of color I don't know if you guys find that I love books um, I mean, yeah, the internet is great, but I do love to have the books with pictures in. And I find in the UK, probably don't find it so much in America, but I find finding pictures of ones that you 
can grow yourself harder. There's always pictures of things with Lysianthus in and other things that don't grow so well in the UK. But that is all the seed. Okay, so now I've still got one row here, which we will put something else in. Um, let's go with the apple blossom. Right, label for apple blossom. I'm terrible for growing loads and loads of varieties. What I should do is find a mixed seed colour that I like and stick with it. But I'll tell you why I don't do that, particularly my scabious last year. So I'll show you what I grew. Last year I bought this fantastic mix of scabious and I thought, oh look at all those colours, okay. And I had three metre square of scabies, three metre square, all um, sown at slightly different times so that I didn't have it all flowering at once. And you know, every single one was white. Luckily, white is, if you're going to have one colour, it was a good colour to have. But that's why I tend to buy all the different varieties because I know I'm guaranteed to get a mix of colours. So in fact, I have bought a whole load of different um, scabies this year as well. Um, some of which has been overwintering. They're still tiny. And I think I've lost a few, but I've still got some. I think I'm pretty sure I've got more than one seed there. There, right. So that was apple blossom. We'll, we might do some more apple blossom if we've got any more space. Right, let's do these two, which we've got lots of now. We'll do half a tray each of the um, canary birds and the Brighton Rock next. So get rid of that tray because he's done. Who else lets their drink get cold? I do it all the time. Right, let's do some labels then. Oh, oh we did a label for Canary Bird, didn't we? So we just need one for Brighton Rock. Right, I'll carry on doing this now and then in a minute we're gonna and put some ranunculus in some beds in here. Okay, so I've finished um, sowing the seed now. Um, so what I'm going to do now is something I've not done before, which is put some ranunculus that have been pre-sprouted into um, grow bags in my greenhouse. I, I used to have a polytunnel, so I could do early ranunculus in the polytunnel, and then I'd always pre-sprout some in February, which I would put straight outside, which we will still do together. Um, so we'll get to February and I've got some new colours this year to try to um, pre-sprout and put out. These ones that I pre-sprouted, sorry, I'm terrible for record keeping. I can't remember when I pre-sprouted them. Um, but they are last year's Rankus corns that I dug up, um, re-soaked and sprouted. So I'll go over to the cold frame and get a tray of them and we'll see what we're dealing with. Okay, so I've got three big trays, which look in pretty good condition. And I've got one smaller tray, which they look really rubbish. So I'm definitely going to move the really rubbish ones 
um, just to give them a better chance. So these are the grow bags I've got. I just got those on the good old internet. Um, and they just fit under my benches. Um, so they've still got quite a lot of light there. But in the summer, I tried growing zinnias and they were um, just trying to grow to the light too much. But because these are gonna be quite early, I think we'll get away with it. Um, if we don't, we don't and we won't do it again. But uh, it's worth a try. So I just need to clear these beds uh, ready to plant. So I've got an aquilegia there that needs to find a home. A verbena boreensis. I've got some poppies, two of them. Look, they'll probably die. I'll try and pop them on, but my experience is that poppies do not like being moved. And then I've got um, a couple of chrysanthemums there. And that anemone can stay. Um, and then yeah, just some more croissants. So I'll go ahead and move those. Okay, I'm gonna actually put some gloves on this time. Lesson learned. Oh, I've got a hole in it, but hey no. Well, you'd think I'd be prepared and have um, a nice trowel or something, but I haven't got a nice trowel in here. All I've got is some ropey old fork that just happened to be stuck in here, but. Hopefully that'll work. Um, so we've got the chrysanthemum here. I'm not even that much of a fan of chrysanthemums. But I was at this little village market and there was some guy there selling plants and I got chatting to him and he, he was a really nice man and I just bought something because I liked him and you know it's a little small business and support local and all that so that's how I ended up with, with these chrysanthemums and he didn't know what colour they were going to be <laughs> and of all the colours these are a really bright oh well, there's a bud there a really bright yellow which is not my favourite but um now I've got them I just sort of keeping them alive but they're the they're the wrong time of year flowering for me. Um, I don't have anything to go with them uh, when they flower. This one looks a bit ropey, doesn't it? I'm not sure how that'll go. Right. That gets rid of those. This is a mix of soil and compost and manure in here because I cleaned the greenhouse yesterday and I did use the hose pipe in here and this is all actually quite wet so we won't worry about watering them in because also the ranunculus are really wet because I've been trying to leave the cold frame open as much as possible to stop stuff Oh, look, there's a little ranunculus there. I don't know how he's ended up in here, but we'll give him a go. Oh, there's a poppy there. I'm just sorry, poppy. I'll, I'll, I'll just chuck a load of poppy seed in the ground in the spring. I've got poppies everywhere, so I'm not going to worry too much about those. Right, okay. Let's get that ropey tray first. Yeah, so you can see they're just really wet um, in danger of rotting. There's one there that hasn't even sprouted. I'll, I'll chuck it in here and see what happens. Oh, where's that rapey? Well, we'll, we'll give him a chance, you never know. These, yeah, see these haven't got very good root systems on them. I'm expecting when we look at the other tray in a minute, I'm expecting, you just you barely see the roots on there. I'm expecting the other tray in a minute to have really good roots. And it's just the difference of trays. Um, those plastic trays that I reuse are ever so good. These are just really cheap ones that I reuse as much as I can, but you can see they break. If, if you're gonna use plastic, use plastic that you can reuse again and again and again. Um, this this flimsy stuff just ends up in landfill. Oh. 
can I split him or keep him together? Keep him together is not worth the risk. Oh, we've got some really little ropey ones here. Put them right in the edge. And, and I'm not chucking them away. If they don't grow, they don't grow. Oh, don't know what sort of seedling that is. Bung it in. Never know. Could be something good. Okay. Okay, so here's one of the really good trays. So I'm expecting some really good root systems here. These are all pinks and whites. I'll put a picture up. Oh yeah, look at that. That's the difference. I can't remember what colours I've got to do that I haven't done before. I think I've got like some quite orangey ones. Um, I, I must admit, I'm a bit of, you know, everyone's like got a taste. I prefer working with pastel and pale colours because that's just what I like. I do grow a lot of bright colours because that's what sometimes other people like. Yes, yeah, so if you're ever wondering if you can replant ranunculus, you know, I just dug these up, stored them, and uh, yeah, if anything, I think they're gonna be better this year, well, if, if the growing them in here works, because they're, you know, really nice big plants. But it will be interesting to see what they do about the light being under this table. I've also got a bed in my shed, which I did plant stocks in one year, but, it, because it's, it has got sort of skylight and it's got window, I, I still found stuff growing really wonky and stocks. Obviously, you want nice straight stems, really. You don't want, you don't want leaning ones. And no matter how much I staked them, they were still not great. And I would definitely divide those two. I hope these don't flower too early. It's supposed to be about 90 days, I think, but considering I can't remember when I planted them, it might have been a bit of a rookie mistake, because it might, might be a bit like the chrysanthemums. I've got nothing at the end of the season to go with them, and I might have nothing to go with these, unless I've got tulips. I can have nice pinches of ranunculus. We'll count how many we put in here in a minute. Um, and any that don't go in here, my job is to build a cold frame. That's one of my next projects. Right, so how many is that? One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten. Miss the anemone. Twenty four in there. That's about right, I should think, isn't it? Right, we'll move over the other side now side. Gosh, I thought that verbena was going to have a bigger root system than that. Yeah, I'll do. I don't know how this even got in here. Self-sown. Somewhere along the lines. Okay. Aquilegia. Now here, my will give the benefit of the doubt. It'll be interesting to see what colour he is. I've grown a lot of petticoat pink in the past, but I've, well, I've grown all sorts. My favourite is blue, but it won't be that one. Okay, right. Let's get this a bit better. Okay. Oh, this bag is um, bent over in the corner a bit. I don't suppose that's going to help. I wanted something that wasn't permanent because I have found before I sometimes put another 
bench down here and have more seedlings down here. People have been asking me if I'll get another polytunnel. Um, honestly, I don't think I will. I think I'm going to try and grow with the space I've got. And I'm quite keen to give low tunnels a chance. Um, polytunnels are a huge financial investment. And um, for the growing that I do, you know, I'm not a professional. This is not my job it's a really big um, expenditure that you know I, I don't think I can really justify oh there's even a worm in here oh that's a good sign Give these a feed in a day or so. Alright, I don't think I'm gonna put any more. Oh actually I'll just put this. Oh no, he's one. Right. I'm gonna call that a day, it's one, two, three, four. I say 20 but I don't like the corner of this bag and I just think right on the edge everything is just going to dry out and die so I think it's worth it. Now if there's a one tray there they can go back in the cold frame. Just a few left in that tray there. Uh, yeah I'll put them back in the cold frame. Okay so the ranculus are in the grow bags now and I think the thing that's going to be really beneficial about that, I think it's going to be really handy that when the greenhouse does start to heat up, I'm going to be able to actually take the grow bags outside. Um, last year with my later ones, which I start in February, I did have to use some shade cloth because obviously um, we had quite a cold spring and then it really, really started heating up really quickly and the shade cloth help quite well. With the grow bags here, I can actually position them depending on what the year's gonna be like next year. Now, if it's gonna be super hot again, I'm gonna put this on shady, and if it's just gonna be average, they can just go outside the greenhouse door. Um, so, fingers crossed, this is gonna work really well. Only time will tell. Um, we're gonna end that video now. Um, it's getting really dark. Um, so thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.